You're watching Old Mates Backyard Tech. It's been more than a year now since I've done one of these sort of videos. For those who've been supporting me since I first started my little corner of YouTube here, you'll remember that for a while I did a lot of these videos. Well, it's back. It's profile time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, let's have a sticky beak at one of the super micro servers that's going to end up being my main network server. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is profile time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Tuesday. It's been more than a year since we've done one of these videos. In fact, it was the, oh, well, back in October last year, actually. Um, which means I've had that APC UPS for over a year now. For a long time, we did do a lot of profile videos here at Backyard Tech. Actually, we started doing profiles when the channel was 245AJS, wasn't it? So, what's on the cards for this profile video? Well, what we're going to have a look at in a little bit more detail is one of the super micro servers that I have decided to line up as my main network server, what will end up running Neth server. Now, People are going to tell me what they want me to do with it. You can go and get knotted because I'm not doing what you want me to do. I'm over it now. I'm going to do what I want to do. You don't like it? Yeah, fine. You don't like it. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to go over the whole server. All right. Front to back. We're going to boot it up. We're going to have a look through the BIOS, the whole kit and caboodle. That should be fun, shouldn't it? It's been a while since we've done one of these, but for this video, as I said, it is profile time. Let's have a sticky beak at one of the super micro servers I've picked out to run my network here at home. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so here's the server that I have picked to become the new network server here. Um, this one is the one with a single Xeon CPU on it. Now these are these super micro 113-6s. Let's go across the front. As you can see, eight two and a half inch drive bays. We have an old school 1800s technology DVD ROM drive. This is only read only only. This is not a burner. All right, so this will read CDs and DVDs only. Um, eight two and a half inch drive bays in it at the moment are two 300 gig Western Digital Enterprise storage SATA drives. These are not. SAS. All right, these are just regular SATA drives. I have no idea what are on these drives. I'll have to go and have a look at them shortly. But as you can see, they are standard SATA interface. Now, the one thing I love about this server compared to the Dells is You simply take out the spaces and you can put more hard drives in it. Whereas the Dells, I don't have the spud trays, unfortunately. So it's got to go in that way, doesn't it? So that's the front of it. All right, we'll spin this around. Making sure I keep it on the table. Right, now for the power up of this, I've already removed one of the PSUs. Here it is here, a 650 watt, cold watt PSU. Um, I'm not sure whether the camera will focus on it. There you go. So that's, that's the power supply. There's the power interface. There's my cup of coffee. On the back, we have two PS2 ports. We have our remote management or ILO, USB 2.0, RS-232, DB15 VGA, Gigabit NICs. 
all right? And there was nothing in this one either. All right. One quick release screw. Careful of the cup of coffee. All right. So across the front of this, I've spun it around, we have our front end IO. So this has got the optical drive here, which is actually SATA. So it is a SATA optical drive. And then we have our SAS backplane. As you can see, SAS backplane there onto an onboard controller. I don't know what the controller is yet. I also don't know whether this thing's got any passwords that need to be cleared or not to get into the, the BIOS. We'll have to look at that. Chipset. One Xeon CPU with three gig of RAM. All right, and as you can see, and then our rear PCI Express IO, it has two, one full width, one half width by eight and by 16. Now what PCI these are, I don't know. Haven't worked that out. We do have a VRM already there for the second proc. Uh, we obviously have our VRM and everything for our other proc here. Um, I think for memory with these, that's proc one, that's proc two. Am I right? Not sure. The board is itself. Oh, and also we have two USB 2.0 ports on the board too. So you can run like a, you know, 16 gig USB key and just slot it in there and what have you, or one of those little right angle type ones. Cut the cover off, the CPU modules. And we have a Super Micro, what have we got there? X8DTU-F series motherboard. It's not, it's actually not a bad little unit when you think about it. I don't know what that is. I'm not prepared to tear this down because this is going to go into production mode so I don't really want to tear it down the BIOS is an AMI BIOS so it's a Megatrends BIOS which will be interesting uh, the BIOS is a 7 let me zoom in on that the camera will focus there's the BIOS 786Q American Megatrends. So, easy BIOS to get into. Um, if it is locked up, we these are the, that's the CMOS clear there. I'll just clear the BIOS and go again. So, anyway, all right. Well, let's uh, let's get the top cover off. Oh, sorry. Let's get the top cover back on. Get the plasma screen hooked up. Get a keyboard, and uh, my camera finally focuses. Get a keyboard, and we'll get stuck into having a sticky beak around uh, around the server. Well, it's booted, but as you can see, there is nothing coming out of the onboard graphics but it is booting <laughs> so uh i'm not sure what's going on here let me just see if i can do a couple of things and we'll come back all right finally we're up so we have a two gig intel xeon cpu an E5504 from 2009. I'm waiting for the thing to fire up. Except it has stalled out. I did want it to go into the BIOS. So we're going to have a sticky bake at it. Freaking loud bloody thing. So we have an Adapt Deck 
SATA ray controller. Both healthy in raid one. Alright. Hey, there we go, finally. Alright. Well, the time's out. And if we uh, scan in a little bit. So we have quad core. We have two gig of RAM only. All right, I might have to add some more. A two gig Xeon CPU. Let's have a look at what we've got here. Apologies for the line. Remember, this is a plasma screen. We can do virtualization. It does have multi-threading. That's good. That's actually not bad, this unit, is it? Start a configuration, set as RAID, running an adapt deck. Here's our remote access, which is disabled. Cleared all that out. That's actually reasonably good, isn't it? So at least I got it to boot this time. <laughs> um, had to change that jumper. So I will change it back at a later date, but um, for some reason uh, this thing said, or online it said it should have had pads and it's actually got a jumper. 720 by 400. I'm doing two things at once here, guys, so just bear with me. I don't know what's on this. Not that I'm too worried. I mean, it's in RAID 1, so I can mean, always find out what's on it later. And what's it going to start to load? Oh, Windows. Okay. Oh, no, we're not going to worry with Windows. I'm not worried about it, so... Okay, well that's actually, that's not bad. So this will do for Neth server. Um, for the time being anyway. Um, and I will get it all set up with Neth server. Um, I'll have to use optical media. Well, maybe not. I might be able to get this to boot from USB. Um... Yep, it's Windows, but what Windows is it? Actually, I think this is running Server 2008. Am I right? Yep. Windows Server 2008 R2 standard. Okay. Well, it's a bit noisy. But, theoretically, I've got it up and running. So there we go. So, the only difference between these and the other two is the other two are quad CPUs, I think. This is just a single, which will be perfectly fine for, for NES server. I'll control the loop to log on. Well, that won't be happening. So, there we go. Alright. I'm not going to show you guys this, but... Yep, that's what I thought. There we go. Alrighty. Well, there is the new network server for, for me. That's a bit better. 
It's a bit quieter. So there's my new server. And this will get Neth server on it. I'll find out what's on these drives. If there's nothing, I'll just bleach them. And I'll run um, I'll run a couple of drives in this and we'll we'll get it all rated up. So there's this is the server that's gonna run Neth server. And uh, there we are, profile video. Theoretically, I think this should boot from the I, I say I think this should boot from USB. I think these have the ability, although someone will probably tell me I'm mentally in an aim for even having these, but there we go. A Super Micro 113-6. I guess it's almost a 1U. Oh, no, 2U. It is 2U high. Uh, server. At least one of them. And what I'll do is I've got spare drives, so I can actually add, as I was saying, with... Get one that actually comes out. <laughs> See, I can just undo these um, little spud tray things and pop the drives in, which is nice. So there we go. The one thing I like about HP and Super Micro is this. It's not so good with the Dell because the two Dells, I actually need the proper hard drive spud trays for them. So there we go. Profile video of a Super Micro 113-6. We'll see what else crops up throughout the day, guys. Have a good one. Cheers.